hi guys in this tutorial you'll be learning how to make a high waist short pants i promise that after this tutorial you won't have any issues with your pants or your trousers anymore if this is what you're interested in learning keep on watching and let's get straight into it for this tutorial remember it is a short pants i'm going to be making use of two yards of this ankara print on top of my table now i've folded my fabric into two i'm going to open it so you see how i folded and then after this, here are the measurements we are going to be needing for this tutorial. We are going to be needing the round waist measurements, the round hip measurements, the crotch depth, the round tie measurements, and then the length of the short pants. Now for the waist measurement, you are going to divide by four. For the hip measurement, you are going to divide by four. For the crotch depth, you are going to have to divide your hip by four. And then for the tie, divide by two and the length okay now i'm going to start by marking out the baseline so for me to cut out my pants either a short or a trouser i like to have my vertical line and the horizontal line i've marked out the horizontal line now i'm drafting out the vertical line from the center fold now after that i'm going to connect it straight down to where i want the length of my pants to stop and then after this on this baseline, which is the starting line, I'm going to place my tape and mark out the crotch depth. So remember, my crotch depth is my hip circumference divided by 4, 11.5 inches. And then I'm using a length of pants of 18 inches. But because I need some inches to fold my pants, I added 2 inches extra, making it 20 inches. So after that, I went ahead to connect my lines. And then next thing I'm going to do is from the crotch depth line, I'm going to come up by two inches for my hip point. Okay. So I'm now going to place my tape and mark out two inches upwards, and that becomes my hip measurement. So after that, I'm going to connect it across just like this. Now, guys, after this, I'm going to input my hip circumference divided by four on the crotch depth line, just like this. I will equally input it on the hip line just like this and then on the waist line just like this okay and then after that i'm going to use my straight ruler to connect the points together and then from here next step i'm going to take is divide my tie measurement by two okay so this tie measurement after dividing it by two go ahead and input it on the crotch depth line just like this so my tie divided by two is 14.5 inches i'm going to input it and next i'm going to come up by 1.5 inches and this 1.5 inches that we just came out is just to ensure that the crotch depth doesn't go that deep all right so just ensure that you come up by 1.5 inches or two inches depending on the size of the client now on this same crotch depth i'm going to divide whatever i have right there by two okay and then mark it out and then move over to the waistline mark it out on the hip line i'm going to mark and then also mark on the length of my pants and then connect the points together now guys after this next step i'm going to take is move over to the waistline okay now i'm going to divide my waist circumference by four so my waist circumference is 40 inches divided by four i'll be having 10 inches i'm going to mark and then because i'll be needing one inch for my dart intake i'm going to also mark it but if you don't want to add up a dart please do not add up this one inch just connect it down to the hip line just like you can see me do right now okay now because i have added one inch for my dart intake i'm going to mark out half an inch on both sides just like this for my dart intake and for the depth i'll be making use of four inches and then i'll connect my dart legs now after this next i'm going to now go down to the length of my pants okay and because whatever we have on the tie measurements downwards we are supposed to divide by two now remember we have actually divided this our fabric into two parts so because of that we are going to further divide by two again so my crotch depth circumference is 14.5 inches remember so now because the pants is a free pant and the down there is not too tight okay 
what I'm going to do is after dividing my thigh measurement 14.5 inches by 2, I'm going to have 7.25 inches. So what I did down there was just to mark out 7 inches. So I removed just 2.5 inches and then connect it back to the crotch line. I hope you guys understand. Now guys, after this, I'll move over to the waistline. Now from here, I'm going to come down by 1.5 inches and then connect it back to the waist point, just like this. Now we are not going to cut this out right now. We are going to cut it out after we must have cut out the back pattern of this pant, okay? So as you can see, I'm trying to cut this out. Now, remember our initial waist measurements. We are going to have to add up half an inch for sewing allowance. Okay, you are still going to understand why I'm doing all this because we need half an inch to join the waistband into this pants, right? So I've added it and I continued my cutting. Now I'm done with this cutting and this is our front pants. We're going to move over to the back. So I'm going to fold my fabric into two again. And after folding into two, I'm going to, from the top of my fabric, come down by 3 inches. You can actually come down by 2.5 inches, but to be on the safer side, I came down by 3 inches. Marked my horizontal line. Now, from the center fold, I'm going to come in by 1 inch for my vertical line. And then I'm going to connect it with my straight ruler. Now, after these, I'm going to bring in one piece of the front parts, okay? There is no need working with the two pieces. Now, if you take a close look, you will notice the way I placed in my front pants, okay? So, I made sure that it is in between the vertical line and the horizontal line of the back. And after that, the next step I'm going to take is taking my crotch extension for the back, okay? So, I use 2.5 inches for the crotch extension of the back and after connecting the line i'll move over to the length and down there i'll be adding up just two inches okay and after that i will use my curve to connect the points together just like this so guys if you notice when i was drafting out the front i didn't add any seam allowance so this allowance that we are adding now is going to take care of the front and the back allowance okay now I'll move over to the waistline and I'll be extending it by 2.5 inches as well. And after that, I'll connect it down to the crotch line just like this. And then connect it just like this. You can see. Or if you can't eyeball it, just come out by 1.5 inches just like I did for the front. Now guys, after this, I'm going to have to move over to the waistline. And I'll be extending the back waist by 1.5 inches. You guys remember that I took down 1.5 inches before adding up my half an inch for the waistband. So this 1.5 inches is what I'm trying to replace to the back, okay? Because I'm still going to cut off that 1.5 inches for the front. Now, after that, I'm going to go ahead and measure what I have as my waist circumference plus the that allowance of 1 inch. And I'm going to take it down like this and equally extend it outward just like this now after that i'm going to have to input my dart intake for the back okay so i make sure that i have four inches just like i have for the front and then i marked out half an inch on both sides and then for the depth of the dart i'm going to use five inches which is one inch bigger than what i use for the front okay so i'll go ahead and connect the dart lines and then you guys, after that, I'm going to have to input my sewing allowance, half an inch, for joining the back to the band as well. So after connecting it, I'll go ahead and cut this out because we are done, okay? So guys, please take note of how I'm cutting this out. You have to pay good attention to this. So for now, I'm cutting out the back. And after cutting out the back i'm going to take it out and then we work on the front
so guys as you can see i am done cutting out the back block so i'm going to take it out and we are going to have to add up half an inch seam allowance starting from the 1.5 inches that i took down on the front okay so you can see what i am doing so i've added the half an inch and i'm going to connect it and then we cut it out so you can see uh, this is very easy so we have our front block as well now remember i was working with one piece of this front so i'm going to bring in the other piece and make sure that i cut off that 1.5 inches as well so you can see now guys we are done i'm going to notch my darts and here is the back block i'm going to equally notch the dart of the back and you guys this is our back and the front block okay so that is it for cutting out the front and the back block now i'm going to remove the back block and then we cut out our pocket that is if you want a pocket for this okay and you can see from the inspiration that i'm looking at to make these pants we have a pocket right there in fact pocket makes trouser to be very fine because by the time you put in your hands you guys you just lay and you keep moving okay so i've brought in my pieces for the pocket what i'm going to do now is because i'm going to cut out four pieces of this pocket i folded into four you can see the way i folded it just fold into two and fold again now i've brought in the front piece of my pocket as usual i'm making use of one of the pieces of the fronts and then i'm going to have to go ahead and cut it out okay for where i want this pocket to end i'm going to follow the that line you can see so i'm going to push up my front piece just like this and then continue to cut it out now after cutting out the side i'm going to raise up the damp parts and equally cut it out okay so that damp part of the pocket is going to end on the hip line okay so guys as you can see I am done cutting it out so what i'm going to do is go ahead and place my notch on the inside so for the inside i'm going to use two notches and the upper part i'm going to use one notch this is just for me to differentiate the hip side and the inner part of this pocket because if you don't do that you're going to get yourself confused now i've removed two parts of this my pocket and i left two parts on the table okay remember what we did initially was to trace out the shape of the hip on this pocket now on the waistline i'm going to come in by two inches for my pocket wideness which is the pocket opening and for the depth i'm going to go down by six inches you can either go down by seven inches or six inches and from this six inches mark i'm going to equally come in by half an inch and then connect it to the waistline so and then i'm going to have to cut it out now you can see with this we have the pocket filler and the pocket facing okay now remember i've been working with one part of my front piece okay so the other part i'm going to bring it in and equally cut out my pocket opening okay so now after this i'll now bring in the pocket filler and the pocket facing and then show you guys how to place them okay so you are going to have to place them right side facing each other and also you are going to have to make sure that the upper part faces the upper part and the side faces the side okay and then this is my this is just me marking out the wrong parts so that i won't get myself confused after doing that for one part i'm going to arrange the other side as well so you guys you can see why i say you should not cheat because trying to place this the right way was kind of difficult for me if not that i notched the side and the upper parts so guys i am done with this now i'm going to go ahead and hold this down with my pins so that i won't misplace the way i arrange them and then after that i'm going to bring in my front and the back piece okay so i'll bring in the front and the back piece move over to my weaving machine and weave the rough edges and equally hold in my dart okay so guys i always love to weave the rough edges before sewing my seams this is because i usually sew with half an inch and you know that after sewing this you won't be able to weave it okay it will be difficult for you to weave 
now i am done weaving it and as you can see i've also held in the darts you can see what i have on the table now i'm going to put it aside bring in my pocket so that i'll show you guys how i join this together now for this my pocket what i did this is the inside you can see and if i turn it you will notice that i have the rough edges right here so what i did was to place in my pocket wrong side facing each other and i went ahead to stitch and then weaved now i'm going to turn it around now if i turn it around the good side is now inside and the wrong side you can see the chalk is at the upper part okay so that was what i did now to fix it into my pants i'm going to have to make sure that the right side which is inside is being placed on the right side of my pants and then stitch with half an inch top stitch and then flip it over to the inside so you can see i am done stitching and i've stopped stitch i'm now going to flip it just like this please pay good attention to what i'm trying to show you right now so you can see i will arrange it properly well so that the upper part of the pocket aligns with the upper part of my pants and the side equally aligns with the hip side okay and i'll go top stitch and you guys after top stitching this i'll come over here so that i will show you guys what to do next you can see i am done top stitching this okay and this is what i have this is the pocket you can see how my hand entered inside and this is the wrong part so i'm going to now move over to my weaving machine and weave this part of the hip side of the pocket because i haven't even weaved it as you can see i am done with the weaving of that part next i'm going to have to place the two right side facing each other just like this and then i'm going to move over to my sewing machine stitch up the crotch using half an inch now after that i'll repeat the same thing to the back okay so this is the back place the right side facing each other and stitch the crotch using half an inch so guys as you can see i am done stitching the two crotch and this is what i have i've also gone ahead to stitch the side seam using half an inch as you can see okay so this is for one part and this is the other side and you guys when i was stitching this i left about one inch at the upper part because we are going to have to input the waistband from that side okay now from here i'm going to move over to the damp part so that we close up the damp part now before i close up the damp part i'm going to ensure that the two crotches are matches that is the front and the back and i'm going to stitch it up using half an inch as well now every of my stitches here is going to be with half an inch i'm not going to exceed that okay the side seam the crotch and the damp part i made this of half an inch to do that now after stitching the next thing is for me to measure my round waist okay now for the front i have 18.5 inches right there and then i'm going to equally measure the back waist okay now after measuring that i got about 23.5 inches so what i'm going to do is close these two together to know if i'm on a safer side okay remember my waist circumference is 40 inches so as you can see i have 42 inches so that is perfect including my seam allowance okay now guys i'm going to have to cut out my bands here is the pieces i'm going to use for my bands the height of my band is going to be two inches but i'm going to cut out 2.5 inches because i'm going to be using half an inch to sew this okay now i'm going to have to cut out the back band first so my back band is 23.5 inches but i'm going to cut out 24.5 inches just to be on a safer side okay so after that i'm going to cut it out so here is my back band I'm going to put it aside and fold my fabric into two again and then cut out the front band okay for the front band i'm still going to use 2.5 inches and then the length of the band is 18.5 inches but i'm going to cut out about 20 inches okay so as you can see i'm trying to cut it out now after cutting out the side i'm going to place in 
the back band because the two of them are the same height there is no need marking out this 2.5 inches again so you can see what i am doing i'm going to use it to cut out the front band as well now after that you can see i have my back and front band now what i'm going to do is bring in my fusible interface so i'm going to make use of hair stay i've gone ahead to do that and you can see what i have right here so the half inch i'm going to use to sew i folded it inwards so this means that the height of the band i have left here is two inches as you can see so the half an inch is what i'm going to use to sew the band into the short knicker so we are going to bring in the short knicker so that we can sew the band into it now i'm going to start with the back so what i'm going to do is bring in my band and then open it up just like this now remember that i folded in half an inch so i'm going to place the right side of this band facing the wrong side of my pants okay just like this and i'm going to follow this half an inch that i've just folded in to sew into the short knicker and after that i'm going to top stitch okay so guys you can see i am done with it now i'm going to also move over to my sewing machine turn it over to the wrong side so that we can stitch up the side seam okay now for one part of it i'm going to use a tie stitch and the other one i'm going to loosen up my stitches so that i can fix in my zip now my zip is going to stop from the waist down to nine inches you guys i am done stitching in the zipper and this is what we have you can see i've also hemmed the down part of this my knicker so this is what we have this is the final look of our pants i hope you guys find this tutorial helpful if you do please don't forget to give it a thumbs up remember to share this video so that more people can get to see it as well and if you are yet to hit on the subscribe button please subscribe turn on your post notifications so that you get notified for whenever i upload a new video i will see you guys in my next tutorial bye